Accounting Basics in Record Keeping In this introduction, we will see what is uh, bookkeeping and accounting. We will see what is accountancy in India and what is accountancy. Okay. So to start with, uh, we will first see what is bookkeeping and accounting. Bookkeeping and accounting are very old practices followed whenever there was usage of money in ancient societies. This practice is as old as money itself. In olden days, who used to manage the property of wealthy people were stewards who used to prepare statements of their properties at regular intervals of time. Luca Pacioli, the famous Italian monk, propounded modern accounting in his book Summa. The Italian methods were later assumed in good time during the 20th century by Europeans at large. Now, what is accountancy in India? In India, accountancy began by an introduction from Kautilya in his book Artha Shastra. So this happened in 4th century BC. So we are way ahead in accountancy when, when in comparison to other people. This is because uh, Kautilya in his book Artha Shastra uh, did accountancy uh, by uh, an introduction uh, which is given in uh, Artha Shastra. So this happened also in the 4th century BC. Now let us see what is accountancy. Accountancy is referred to as the art of recording business transactions in the form of books so that effective analysis of those accounts can be carried out once the accounting data is recorded in the book. Incomes and expenses are recorded as and when it becomes due in the mercantile system of accounting. However, in cash method, excess of receipts over expenditure is recorded on the book of accounts. So that is basically a gist of what is accounting. Now let us see what is double entry bookkeeping. So these are basics of bookkeeping and accounting. Double entry bookkeeping is the concept we actually use it in accounting. We will see what it is. In double entry accounting, an entry in a record, which is a journal or ledger. So there are two types of records which we maintain in accounting. One is journal where we actually make entries and then there is ledger where we keep a track of accounts. That is the ledger book or the ledger uh, where we actually keep track of all the accounts. Now in double entry, an entry in a record, whether it is journal or ledger is balanced with a contra entry. That would mean if there is a debit entry made in one account, there is a corresponding credit entry. That is, if there is a debit entry which is made in one account, there should be a credit entry for that value which should be entered in other account or accounts. Now, what exactly is debit entry and what is credit entry? This normally depends upon the accounts where the entries are made. Debit entry as well as credit entry is dependent upon where the account, where the entries are made, which means which account those entries are made. There are also accounting rules which would govern what is to be debited and what is to be credited in terms of a journal entry or in terms of entries in the ledger account. So you know that there is a debit entry and there is a credit entry. What is the meaning of it? This is dependent upon the accounting rule which exists for a particular account. So we will see what are the different types of account. Accounts are basically of three types. One is personal, real or nominal. <coughs> personal account where we actually follow the accounting rule where we say debit the receiver and credit the giver. In real account, we say debit what may come in and credit what goes out. In nominal account, we debit all expenses or loss and credit all incomes and gains. We will illustrate this with the help of an example, but basically understand that there are basically three different types of account in accounting, uh, which are personal account, real account and nominal account. Personal account may be any person's account, capital account, all, all are examples of personal account. What is real account? Cash is a real account. Uh, and there is an accounting rule which we actually follow for real account, which would say debit what may come in, credit what goes out, which would mean in the cash account, if an organization has a cash account, 
you actually, if the organization gets paid for some of the services it, it renders, when we record it, we actually debit the cash account, which would mean money comes into the account. If we actually uh, give money to a person from the, uh, from the organization, which has a, a cash account, which is a real account, we actually credit that person. Uh, and we actually credit the cash account which would mean money is going out of the organization. Now, so we actually have the concept of accounts. These accounts go to a particular business level or an entity, uh, which may be an office, a mercantile firm or a manufacturing firm. So there are different accounts assigned to an office. For a mercantile firm, which does basically sales and uh, buying and selling of goods, a mercantile firm would have a different set of accounts. A manufacturing firm where it actually deals with raw materials and then finished goods, etc. The set of accounts which are there in the manufacturing firm would be a different set of accounts. So that is what is basically called entity accounts where we have accounts for a particular entity. Entity may be an office, it may be a mercantile firm or it may be a manufacturing concern. But the accounts which are assigned to it are actually different. For example, in the case of entity and office, personal account may be bank, Joe, who is an individual, capital account may be there, bank loan, rent outstanding, etc. may be there for personal account. For real account, it is true, cash is a real account, stock in hand also is a real account, which is there in the case of an office. In the case of an office, the office has to pay salary, it has to pay rent to the building which it occupies. It has to pay wages to the workers. It may receive interest from uh, its uh, investments. It, it may receive commissions from for the services rendered, etc. So these accounts, salaries, wages, rent, interest, commissions received, discount received, etc. actually are office accounts, but they are of type nominal account. So each type of account has its own accounting rules. For personal account, just as we were telling, it is debit the receiver and credit the giver. For real account, it is debit what may come in, credit what goes out. And uh, for nominal account, it may be debit all expenses or loss and credit all incomes and gains. Now, also when we do record these transactions, first we record it in the journal, and then we post those uh, entries to the ledger account. So base ledger actually. So basically all journal entries are actually debit and credit entry. We record debit entry to an account and credit entry by an account. And we actually do that in the journal. And in the led to the ledger, we actually post that so that we get on an account basis how much cash has come in and how much has gone out or something similar to that. We also consider the accounting rules in that aspect. So in the case of a journal, first debit entry is made and then a credit entry is made during the recording of a transaction. This would more or less mean recording journal entries may act as a guideline to what gets posted to ledger. So we will illustrate this with an example. So when we take an example, maybe it is a little bit more clear. So this is double entry. Double entry means if you have made a debit entry, there should be a credit entry somewhere in the account. Okay, whether it is journal entries and then posting after which whether it is in the ledger. Now, uh, let us take the example of uh, two accounts which are cash and salary. Here what is being attempted is that the organization pays salary to a person. So organization pays salary that is what exactly we are trying to illustrate it's a very simple example okay so what get what happens since cash is going out of the organization so first we actually see that it has to be recorded in the journal whatever we are doing and then we actually post it to a ledger recording is to the journal classifying is to the ledger and then we prepare trial, ba trial balance and final accounts. So it's a simple example. The exercise is we have the organization is paying cash uh, to or organization is paying salary. That is what exactly we are trying to 
uh, illustrate. So here, what are the entries which are made? First thing is cash is going out of the organization, which would mean we credit the cash account. Why we credit the cash account? Which would mean, what is the rule here? Cash is a real account. So debit what may come in, credit what goes out. What is going out? Cash is going out. So we have to credit the cash account. So that is the first thing which we do here. We credit the cash account. We actually have to credit the cash account. First thing we do here is we have to make the debit entry. So what is a debit entry? We debit the salary account. Now what is a salary account? So we debit all. Uh, uh, so salary account is an expense item. So we debit all expenses or loss. It is a nominal account. Actually, salary is a nominal account. So we deb debit all expenses or loss, which would mean we have to debit the salary account. And where the money is being thrown out to pay the salary, it is from the cash account. So we actually credit, which goes out. Cash goes out, so we credit the cash account. So that is the basis of double entry bookkeeping. Okay. Now, entity accounts we actually have gone across. Uh, there are different accounts for a particular entity, and that and there are accounting rules for each of those accounts, which we actually follow, which basically falls into three categories: personal account, real account, and nominal account. <coughs> Next is, what is double entry bookkeeping? This also we have gone through. So, next is we'll take a look at what is cash book, what, an introduction to cash book. What exactly is cash book? Any transactions which are done in, in terms of cash uh, that is record, that gets recorded in the cash book. So record transaction containing cash receipts. Whenever you actually get cash, it is we have to give a receipt. The organization gives a receipt. And when we actually make payments, uh, the organization make vouchers. Which account keeps track of all of this? This has been done in the cash book. So cash book has a debit side and a credit side. Cash book also has a date, particulars, a ledger folio, uh, there is a receipt number and amount, date, particulars, ledger folio, uh, voucher number and amount. So this many columns it actually has. It has actually more. There is also a bank column which basically must be there in the cash book but we'll explain about it when we actually uh, see the details of uh, how a cash book is actually uh, present as well as uh, the bank reconciliation activities we actually do in the in terms of cash book. So understand that cash book fundamentally has a date column, particulars where we actually say uh, which account is uh, credited or debited. We have the ledger folio, we have the amount, um, we have the receipt number, we have the amount. Then again date, particulars, ledger folio, voucher number as well as the amount. Cash receipts are basically anything which goes into the organization, which may be office or bank and cash payments are whatever cash payments which are made uh, and gets recorded in the cash book. Thank you.